so I finally got divorced from this piece of crap. His mother, she was even worse. Well, somehow through the grapevine, she found out I was getting remarried, and she calls me out of the blue and vows it's going to be her last breath if I get married. Since I ruined her son's life, she's going to ruin mine. If I was told that after divorcing my ex-husband, my ex-mother-in-law would try to ruin my life, I would not believe it. Now that I think about it, it only proved that insanity runs in the family, and it was really foolish of me to think that Alex would not be the chip off the old block. See, it was really funny of his mother to think that she could ruin my life. Ruin my big day and just get away with it. She wanted me to stay in the marriage at all costs, but it is something I'd never do. I could have preferred to remain single all my life than to stay in that marriage with Alex. When I realized I could not continue anymore, I knew I had to choose between leaving my toxic marriage or slowly losing myself my confidence, and my self-esteem while I remained with him. Here's what happened. Alex, my ex-husband, and I started dating when we were teenagers. Like regular teenagers in love. We believed that we would love each other until the end of time. But I was wrong. I met Alex when I was 15. Just after I finished high school, he was a couple years older than me. And definitely finished high school before me, but... When we first got to know each other, Alex was my dream man. Aside from his looks and physique, Alex had most of the attributes I wanted in a man. Hardworking. Well, he did two jobs, as of the time I met him despite coming from a home that was well-to-do. They were definitely not middle class, and I did not understand why he had to work so hard. He was also very kind-hearted, generous, and loyal and had his ways of always reminding me that he loved me. The truth is, I loved Alex because of who I thought he was and not because of what he had. I came from a comfortable home too, and it was never really because of what anybody had. One of the things I should have really paid attention to was how easily he gets annoyed, picked fights with people, and abused the people that made him mad. Though he never abused me while... We were dating, but we used to literally fight all the time, and I believed it was because he was the possessive kind of man. Most of our fights used to stir up from me talking to other guys, if we hung out together at a party or somewhere. To be honest, I thought it was sweet of him to want to protect his own, but the bad side was that any time this happened, he would get mad and create a scene regardless of where we were, and then he would pull me out. Every time this happened, he would return to apologize and make it up to me and we'd move on. As of then, I only believed he did all these things because he was jealous and he wanted me to himself. It was understandable and I tolerated it. And right now, I also take the blame for how things turned out because it was me who allowed him to treat me the way in the first place. Maybe if I've done something about it, he would not have done the things that he did after we got married. Originally, our plan was to get a different colleges, but he did not stick to the plan. He ended up going to the same college with me, and our love story continued. In college, almost everyone in my department and his department knew that we were in a relationship because <laughs> we were always together. In fact, you did not need to be in my department or his to know that we were seeing each other exclusively. By merely seeing us together, even strangers could tell that Alex was my boyfriend because of the way he was always all over me. If he was hanging out with his friends, clubbing, watching a game, or doing anything that required that he hung out with his buddies, I had to be there. The same thing applied to me. He was always around. Not that I wanted it that way, but it was what he wanted, and I didn't really have a say in it. Being that we dated for a long time, his mother, stepfather, and his siblings knew me, and they were aware that Alex and I were in a relationship. My parents, too, were aware that Alex and I were dating. I don't know how, but they were even aware before I broke the news to them that time. Alex's mother, Susan, was a one-time divorcee. She cheated on Alex's father, got alimony, and remarried his stepfather. 
Luckily for her, she got custody of Alex, thereby contributing to how much time Alex spent with her instead of his father. The day Alex introduced me to his dad, I talked to him, and to be honest, he was quite happy that he divorced his mother because she was very toxic for him, and he didn't mind that she got the alimony, though she took half of everything that he owned. He loved that he was now with someone else and he was definitely happy. Compared to his mother, I'd seen his father fewer times, but I loved every moment I spent with him, and he seemed like a very nice man. Susie, on the other hand, is someone I can't really describe. But to give you an idea, she was one of those mean, rich women who talked to people however they liked and simply did not care how hurtful their words were. The only people she was nice to or spoke nicely to were her family members and her neighbors who did not make her mad. She didn't really have a lot of friends and there's no masking why. She was the kind of controlling woman who always wanted things to go her own way, and if they didn't, she would make a fuss out of it. She did the same thing while Alex and I were planning for our wedding. In the end, it was her wedding except that I was the one wearing the wedding gown. Alex persuaded me to let things go her way so she would be happy, and the detriment of my own happiness, I did. If Susan was in a good mood, she'd try and be nice to me, and if she wasn't, she'd just be her usual rude self. The truth is, I saw all of these traits and I ignored them because somehow, I believed Alex was nothing like her. And because he and his mother never really got along, I believed that he was just trying not to end up like her, but oh boy, I was wrong. I should have seen the signs from how easily we picked fights, raised his voice at other people and said hurtful words to them, and even ridiculed them. I believed I was special, and even if he did it to other people, he would treat me differently. We dated for a couple of years and eventually got married some years back. It was after we got married that Alex began to reveal the personality that he's kept away from me all these years. Maybe he was scared I would leave him like the rest of his friends. Not like he made the wrong choices with friends, they made the wrong choices with him. If there was any form of disagreement, he would lash out at the person and abuse him or her, and that would be the end of their friendship. He continued with this until he had no one left. In fact, he had a new friend or met someone somewhere, it would only be a matter of weeks before he would ruin that relationship completely. And for his controlling aspect, he took it to the next level. While we were dating, he knew how much I wanted to work at a media house. I read journalism, and it's been my passion to work in one of those big media houses. I applied to different media houses and got a couple of rejections, and when I finally got one of my dream organizations, Alex said I wasn't going to do the job. At first, I thought it was a joke because I've been applying for three years, and I lost count of the applications I sent. So, when he said so, I thought he was only playing pranks on me, but he was dead serious. He didn't let me go to the interview. He literally changed the passwords on the door, and I missed my interview. That aside, he began to verbally and physically abuse me. I got pregnant once, but lost it because he hit me. I wasn't aware I was pregnant because I was still seeing my monthly flow. It was after I passed out and was taken to the hospital that the doctor told me I was two months pregnant, but unfortunately I lost the child. Hearing that broke me, and because I loved him, I was unable to report him for domestic violence. It got worse that I could not even go out to see my friends unless they came to see me. If we went out together, it was because he wanted us to, and we would only go to the places that he liked. His verbal abuse got so bad that it began to affect my total self-esteem. He would repeatedly tell me that he did me a favor by dating and marrying me because nobody else would. He called me names and said hurtful words to me every single day. 
then he stopped me from at least working at an eatery, or even doing anything that could take me out of the house regularly. If he did something wrong, I would always be the one to apologize, because to him, I was always the one causing issues. If something happened, he would blame me, even if it was because of him or a result of his mistake that it happened. This continued on for two years. And if anyone asked if everything was fine, I'll admit it was. I slowly began to lose hope in my dreams. In fact, he gave me every reason to doubt what my dream organizations would want me in the first place. I was unhappy every day, and his mother never cared to speak to him. If my family members were around, he would act all nice and caring, but if his mother was there, he would talk to me as if he wanted her in her presence and they would just laugh about it. In the space of two years, my identity changed and he became the monster I never expected him to be. After we got married, I added some weight because Alex was not comfortable with the idea of me going to the gym. So, all I did was eat, sleep, get abused, and stay indoors, except he wanted us to go out, then we would go out. When I added my weight, my skin began to stretch, and I had these pink stretch marks on the upper parts of my thighs. When he saw it, he said he was disgusted, and refused to get intimate with me anymore. He'd talk about how the only difference between me and a zebra was the black and white stripes, while I had the white and pink stripes. And this just really made me feel terrible. I tried to explain to him why I had stretch marks in the first place, but to humiliate me, he told his mother about it, and they both turned me into such a subject of ridicule. She told me she had given birth to four kids, and she didn't have a single stretch mark on her body. The reason that I had stretch marks was that I had terrible skin. Hearing them talk about my body that way hurt me a lot. I did not understand how Alex, the teenage boy who claimed that he loved me and whom dated for years, turned out to be the same person that treated me like a piece of trash. Despite everything he said and did to me, I believed he was being manipulated by his mother and he would change, so I stayed an extra year, but things only got worse. The insults, domestic violence, abuse, it just kept increasing. The one day, we had another argument. I confronted him about a woman he was openly taking her calls, and when I did, he attacked me as usual. But this time it was different because I passed out, and when I was taken to a different hospital, the doctor asked him to reach out to my family. Everyone could see that it was domestic violence, and my usual... I slipped and fell story was not going to cover up for this one. Well, my sister came in and after I was discharged, she took me in. That was the first time in a long time of experiencing the freedom to do whatever I wanted. I stayed in my sister's house for a few months planning my divorce. And when the divorce papers were ready, he got them. Before we divorced, he begged and begged that I took him back, said please... He tried to emotionally manipulate me, but when he realized that it was over between us, he let go and began to send abusive text messages saying things like, No one was going to marry me and I would rot as a single divorced woman. This really got to me, but my sister assured me that everything would be fine. So, I moved on with my life. About a year later, I bumped into one of our old neighbors. And he told me Alex was an absolute disaster. He had multiple failed relationships. He abused a lady and she reported him. But with his mother's help, he wasn't sent to jail. Guess what? Alex had told me that no one would want to marry me and I would rot as a single divorcee. But that was the story of his life. Nobody wanted to marry him at all. Or even be friends with him because of his toxic behavior. He tried to force himself on people, but it just always ended up negatively. It was really sad to find out all about him, but honestly, Alex deserved everything that happened to him. I was even told that he moved back into his mother's and stepfather's house, but his stepfather kicked him out and told him to get his life together. Well, 
All of this, family members were aware of what happened between us, and they were even more disappointed that their mother knew about it, but she did nothing to stop him. Instead, she just encouraged him to abuse me more and more. His siblings, too, distanced themselves from him and did not want to have anything to do with him. In the end, he fell into depression and had his mother as his only support. What's up, everybody? Mr. Redito here. So today's story is a little different than usual. The next update, it came out two years later. That's right, OP logged back into the account and went ahead and gave us an update over 600 days later, and here it is. Well, hey guys, it's been two years after I divorced Alex. I slowly began to see my self-worth and my self-confidence return. Being married to Alex had damaged me so much that it took me a lot of months to get the things he said out of my head. It was so bad that every time I stood in front of the mirror to look at myself, I would see the pink stretch marks and everything he said would just replay in my head. With the help of my friends, family, and most especially my sister, the dream to work in a media house returned. This was the most difficult one because it took me longer to convince myself that I did deserve good things and one of them was working where I wanted to. I began to send my applications after almost two whole years. And luckily for me, I was hired. Though it was not exactly what I wanted. It was a stepping stone though. It felt so good to finally go after my dreams and do the right things I wanted without worrying if Alex was going to approve of it or not. After Alex and I divorced, I blocked him on all my social media handles. In fact, if I got a friend request from someone I did not know or someone without a profile picture, I didn't even think twice before blocking. I always believed that Alex could be the man behind the account and that he was either stalking me or <laughs> something. So I didn't want to take any chances. I eventually signed up for the gym. Though my stretch marks did not go away from exercising, I got some bottles of stretch mark oil and it did help fade them. With Alex out of my life, I was now a free bird that could fly wherever I wanted. I got to meet new people, made new friends, and reached out to the old ones who were probably tired of always coming to visit. It was at my place of work that I met Josh. See, Joshua was my colleague at work, and for some reason he was always so nice to me. I didn't really understand why at first, until I began to read the sign. He wanted us to be a thing, <laughs> but I wasn't fully emotionally healed for all that. So, I talked to my sister about it and she advised me to give Josh a chance, but not rush anything just yet. Gradually, I got to know him and we did become good friends. Not like I had not seen other men, but I can't really explain why I felt so comfortable around him. I told him everything that happened between me and my ex-husband, he understood me. So we continued as friends and about a year later, he asked me to be his girlfriend. Already I've fallen deeply in love with him and I didn't want to put my life on hold because some jerk hurt me in the past. Well, after dating for about eight months, Joshua asked me to marry him and I said yes. To be honest, Joshua was heaven sent, and meeting him brought back a certain level of confidence inside me. It proved that everything Alex said to me was nothing more than a lie. And I really wish he could see the night Alex proposed to me over dinner. We started the wedding preparations plans, and it was an absolute bliss. Joshua's mother and sister were such sweethearts. We made the wedding plans together, and they all agreed with everything that I wanted. Joshua's mother would repeatedly tell me that it was my wedding. I had the right to do everything that made me happy. Hearing this was everything to me because it wasn't so, well, at my first wedding at all. Susan made sure that everything was done her way and that was not how I planned my wedding. With Joshua's mother and sisters on my side, the wedding plans and everything was going smoothly. But the only thing, or should I say the devil... 
that tried to come between me and my wedding was Susan. I don't know how she found out I was getting married, but she did. One day, I was in the wedding dress store trying on a couple of gowns when my phone rang. When I looked at the call, I didn't recognize it. It took a while before I finally understood the voice on the other side of the phone. It was Susan, Alex's mother. She just straightforwardly asked me if it was true that I was getting married, and when I said yes, she let out a long, nasty laugh and told me it was not happening on her watch. And if I was getting married to anybody, it would be her son, because I was responsible for how his life turned out. One of these things really made me mad when she said, and I quote, Don't think you're going to ruin my son's life and then get married to somebody else. I'm not going to let that happen. The moment she said that, I lost control, and I told her how foolish she was to say that. After I had poured out my heart to her, well, she remained silent and I hung up the phone. I doubt anyone had ever spoken to her that way. She was always the one who abused and bullied people with her words, but when I gave her a taste of her own medicine, she simply could not even respond. When Susan called me that day, I didn't know how she was being serious or not. I didn't tell Joshua about the call because I thought she was only trying to be funny. Well, one day, I was with my mother-in-law and sister-in-laws to be, and I noticed that they were being kind of cold towards me. I talked to Joshua about it, and he said it's probably their mood that day, but after a couple of days, the coldness did not go away, and I was forced to tell Joshua to find out what is going on. What he found out shocked me to the bones. It was Susan. I don't know how she got a hold of my mother-in-law's number, and she told her terrible things about me, absolute lies. She told her that I was a no-good, rotten gold digger, and I've ruined the life of her son Alex, and I was going to do the same thing to poor Joshua if they didn't call off the wedding immediately. She said I had introduced Alex to drugs, and he became a drug addict all because of me. She also said that Alex has just been out of rehab and he was trying to come clean. Not just that. Susan told my mother-in-law to be that I was a bad drug addict myself, but I didn't look like it. She said I was going to turn Joshua's life absolutely upside down, and in the end, she would regret why she allowed her son to marry me. When Joshua told me all this, I just could not believe that Susan would stoop so low just to fabricate such lies against me. The only good thing is, I told Joshua everything about my former marriage with Alex during one of our year of friendships, and he already knew who Susan was before she reached out to his mother. It was now left for Joshua to speak to his mother and sister, he assured them that everything was a lie and Susan was only trying to get back at me because I left my toxic marriage. It kind of took a while before they believed me, though. I didn't really blame them. If Joshua were my son, I would have freaked out too if some crazy woman called me up out of the blue and told me all sorts of crazy things about the lady that your son was about to marry. It took us a while before the whole tension died off. When Susan realized that her plans did not work with Joshua's mother, she starts calling Joshua herself. I still don't know how she was able to get all these contact informations. Maybe she looked them up on social media and found their contact there. I don't know. It had to be the only explanation I could think of. I don't know what she fed Joshua, but all I can say is that it got to him, and if not that he trusted me so much, she would have succeeded in ruining my wedding altogether. She just kept telling him that I was a drug addict, I was just pretending so he could marry me, and then I would ruin his life right afterward, just like I did to Alex. In my entire life, I've never tried drugs, not even as a teenager. My uncle was a drug addict, and I've seen how hard it literally destroyed their lives. So there's no way I would have been a drug addict. When the pressure got worse, Joshua was forced to ask me 
if I ever did drugs, but I assured him that I did not. As of this time, we were two weeks closer to the wedding, and I tried everything possible to make sure nothing ruined it for me. I tried to be careful, but I was not so careful. Just enough to see what was coming. I was out one day with Joshua tasting cakes when Susan showed up at the cake shop. At first, she tried to hug me and pretend like she was happy to see me, but when I pushed her back, she began to yell at the both of us. I'm just glad Joshua was there to see how she reacted and abused me. Susan did not need a good reason to abuse anyone. All she needed was someone just to disagree with her on something. And because of her unexpected presence at the cake shop, we had to reschedule our cake tasting for some other time. It was pretty obvious she was stalking us, and it was becoming very scary. That evening was the worst of all for me. There was a pack of drugs in my purse, and I had no idea how it got there. That evening, Susan actually called Joshua with a different number because he blocked her the first time. She said that she was certain that I was carrying drugs because she perceived it on me while she tried to hug me, and she asked Joshua to check my purse just to prove her point. Well, Joshua did, and we were both surprised to see a small nylon of drugs in it. It was obvious that she tried to frame me. Even Joshua said it himself. I mean, he was there when she tried to force herself on me, and that must have been when she put it. Joshua yelled at her and simply just hung up the phone. Then he flushed the drugs down the toilet. At that point, I was really scared of what she would do next. And that's when Joshua came up with the idea of a restraining order. <laughs> and for a couple of days before the wedding, we did not hear a word from her. Everything for the wedding was all set, and on our wedding day, my guts told me she would show up, but Joshua and my mother-in-law assured me that everything would be fine. I found a way to relax and enjoy my wedding day, but I still had my eyes peeled for her. While we had the church wedding, I would scatter my eyes around for her. And when I could not find her in the congregation, the butterflies in my stomach reduced. It was the kind of surprise to me that after several attempts to ruin my wedding, she gave up and did not show up to the event. Her sudden silence was even more the reason I was worried. After the wedding, we moved to the reception venue and everything happened smoothly. When it was time for me and Joshua to cut the cake, something weird happened. Already, Joshua and I noticed a purple discoloration on the cake and I perceived the strong smell of hair dye. But I was skeptical because there were a lot of people in the room and it was possible someone used cologne that smelled exactly like hair dye. When we proceeded to cut the cake... That was when my suspicion was confirmed. There was hair dye dripping from the top tier of four layers of cake from down to the bottom. It was a nightmare. When we realized what it was, we tried to cover it up, and that's when Susan stood up with a microphone in her hand. She had been there the whole time, but she disguised herself in a way that we could not recognize her. The first thing she said was, and I quote, how do you like your cake, darling? And that's when we figured that she was the one behind the hair dye. I was so mad that I walked to her, slapped her, and snatched the microphone from her hands before she said anything stupid to all those people. I wasn't going to let Susan ruin my big day on my watch. Immediately, Joshua called security to throw her out but it seemed like the police were already on their way to have her arrested. The venue owner called her on camera as she poured the hair dye on the cake and called the police. She must have believed that the hall was empty, but she didn't know that there was cameras in every corner. After that, she was arrested. I knew there was nothing that would ruin my wedding day anymore, so my mother and sister-in-law rushed out to grab some cakes for the wedding, and that's how everything was fixed. We had a party, and everyone went home happy. Susan, on the other hand, spent six months in jail because her husband and children were so disappointed at what she has done. Nobody even tried to bail her out. When she was finally released, 
Well, she went back home, but her husband told her that he was tired of her nonsense, that it would be better for everybody if she moved to an elderly home. And her children even said the same. So, they moved her things out of the house and took her to an elderly home where she ended up living. My husband and I never heard from her again, and never heard from or saw Alex ever again, and I didn't care about how his life turned out. I just hope it's miserable. The fact that Susan was kicked out of her house instead of being able to return after six months being in jail, and her own family sent her away to an elderly home because they were simply tired of dealing with her. So, if that shows a little bit of indication how fed up the people were with Susan and this story, that'll do it. Guys, I would love to hear from you. What would you have done any different? Drop your comments down below in the comment section. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing for daily videos. It does support me a lot by subscribing, and I appreciate each and every one of you. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you tomorrow. A peace.